welcome back to my channel. I'm Megan if you're new here and if you're returning for another video, thank you guys so much for tuning in. So as you guys can tell by the title, we are talking about something that is not going to be very fun to talk about and that is just dealing with suicide in the family or just with somebody that you were close with. Um, so I want to always just start the video off by saying this is not an easy topic. This is never something easy to talk about. However, I also know that that is the point of my channel is to share stories with you guys and experiences and talk about things that are not necessarily easy. So I'm going to share my story with suicide in my family. Um, so I do want to just kind of warn you guys that if that is something you're sensitive to and you may not be ready to hear this content, then go ahead and click out now. Um, but if you're ready to hear this and you're kind of looking for advice or you're just looking for something somebody who's also been through something similar, then this is probably a really good video for you to tune into. So I'm simply just going to start this video off by talking about this handsome guy back here and who he is and everything about his life that I remember from a young child. So this is my Uncle Daniel and I'm going to include some pictures of him just so you can see who he was, what he did, and the bond that him and I had. Um, all of my siblings had, but definitely myself and him just because I was the oldest and I was around the longest amount of time that he was here. So my Uncle Daniel was one of seven kids. My mom was the only girl and there were six brothers that she, they were all adopted together from Brazil if you don't know that. Um, so they are Brazilian and they came here to America when my mom was 12. So they've been here for pretty much, a, you know, a really long time. Um, so Daniel obviously came with her and they were adopted into an American family here and they grew up here. They went to um, school here. They learned people here. They just, they did everything here in America. So my uncle Daniel was somebody who everybody loved. Everybody knew him. Everybody just loved his name. People would light up when they heard about him. Um, there were so many just silly stories about he's like this crazy hyper person, all these pranks he used to pull on people and just all the laughs he caused, all the friendships he had. He was just an all around amazing person and everybody loved him. Like to this day, if you say his name, people are just always talking about him. There's never anything bad to say. And it's so funny because whenever I post about him on social media, somebody out of the woodworks pops up and they're like, oh my God, you're his niece that he used to talk about. Like I remember him him talking about you when we were playing soccer because my mom had me fairly young or you know just generally out in the public and so it's just so funny that I'm a grown-up now and um, I'm past the age that he was unfortunately when he passed away but uh, so yeah he was somebody that everybody knew everybody loved everybody absolutely adored him and my uncle and I had a very 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 tight bond we were the best of friends I did everything with him he was in the army so when he would come home from the army he would surprise us like one time he surprised my sister and I by like dressing up and this was probably a really bad idea if we were older but he dressed up in like this all black suit and came into our room and scared the crap out of us and it was just our uncle coming home from the army or I remember one time he was standing at the top of the stairs waiting us waiting for us to get home from school and um, we just had a really tight bond we genuinely did everything together and again I will talk about this another day but because of my household um the male figure in my life growing up what I was not close with at the time and I was in a really crappy situation my uncle was always the one to kind of come to the rescue and he was like my father figure he was the amazing man in my life he was the love of my life he still is I always say that I always joke and say like if he was around we probably would have went to prom together like we were just like this we were the best of friends and so again like you could see some of the pictures of us just hugging and kissing and he was just always super involved in all of our lives all the time he was just super involved he loved us so much that when he would come home from the army he lived with us he would stay in our basement and our laundry room we had made him a room and everything and he would hang out there and my family would always prank each other and he would just be there for us all the time well my uncle along with all of the kids in my mom's family struggled with mental health a lot and for those of you who don't know, a lot of children who are in foster care or who are orphans, sorry, the puppy is around, um, do tend to struggle with uh, mental health. A lot of them struggle with depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts and a kind of extreme, just not very good mental state of mind. Um, and that's something that's just pretty normal from, you know, the effects of adoption and the effects of foster care and all that. So we can go into that in another video as well. So he definitely struggled with that. A lot so when he was younger he um, tried to commit suicide twice when he was younger um, and then he actually did end up going into the army and he 
at the time had a girlfriend here. I believe they broke up. To this day, I still call her my aunt. She's my aunt. I love her to death. And um, so they split up when he right when he left for the army. And when he went to the army, he was put on like, you know, those stabilizing pills from all the crazy crap you see in the army. And that's something that's pretty normal that they give to people in the military. Um, so he was on those pills. He also met his fiance, his soon to be fiance um, in the army. So he met her, they were engaged and everything was good. And he came home and when he was done being in the army, he was he was out, um, he stopped the pills and they kind of cut him cold turkey. And that was obviously something that was very unstable for him given he had already struggled with, with mental health and those pills were stabilizing him a lot. So the taking him off the pills really was not a good thing um, on top of everything else that he was already dealing with. So his fiance at the time called off the engagement and she no longer wanted to be married or be with him at all. And so he was here, he felt like he was alone here. And um, so again, he attempted to commit suicide and he failed again. And then um, when he finally did succeed, my uncle did unfortunately commit suicide. When I was eight, he actually came to my house and he was talking about my mom about some personal things and some aspects of this I'm not going to share too much because it doesn't really matter why somebody commits suicide. The point is that he did. Um, but he was talking about my mom, talking to my mom about everything that was going on. And he walked out of my house. He went into my dad's shed. He grabbed a rope um, and he left. And my mom, you know, we were young. There was four of us all under the age of eight. So we were just super young. And um, my mom was home alone with the kids, all four of us, and she couldn't leave to go chase him. So she was just like screaming out the window, like, don't do anything dumb. You know, the kids need you here. We love you. Um, and he left and he wrote a note that was very, he was very anal about things. So he wrote his, he wrote a suicide note out, um, basically saying what time he would be dead, um, what time he expected people to find his body, like what he wanted to do with his, his keyboard, his glasses, I mean, everything. He wrote down every single thing in this letter. Um, and so my mom to this day swears and she says all the time she felt him leave the earth. She just knew, she knew. And um, for hours, she was calling my aunts and my other uncles and trying to get people to find him and go after him since she couldn't. And I think I don't remember what ex exactly time it was, um, is when she said she felt him leave the earth and she just knew that he was no longer here. Um, the next morning, a jogger was jogging next to a church and he found his body hanging. Um, so that was really tough. Now, I will be honest, when I was young and this originally happened, when my mom told us that he passed away, she told us when we were laying down, um, I was laying down in the living room and she told us that he was sick and that's how she told us he passed away. And for the longest time, we just thought he was sick and something was wrong with him and so he passed away and that was the extent, you know, I was young. We really didn't understand what death was, much less suicide. And so we just thought he was he was sick for a really long time. And then years went by and I kind of, I, I had a lot of breakdowns over the years after he passed away. I didn't eat for days. I didn't sleep for weeks. I could not stop crying. I mean, it, it took me like now, like this year to be even able to say his name without losing my mind, which is why I finally can talk about this and share this video because I used to not be able to. I would literally choke up and not be able to talk. So now I can talk about it and that's why I'm doing it. But um yeah, so it took it took years. And a couple years go by and one time I was I was getting out of the um car for school and I just kind of lost it. I don't know why. I I think the day before I remember seeing he had these crazy big ears and you guys will see it in the picture, but he had these huge ears. And I remember seeing this like silhouette in a computer screen and I was in elementary school at the time and it had his big ears. So the next morning when my mom was dropping me off at school, I kind of was telling her about that, lost my mind, kind of cried and just lost it. And she was like, well, do you really want to know what happened to Daniel? Like, do you want to know the truth? And I was like, what do you mean? I thought I knew the truth. I thought he passed away because he was sick. So yes, I want to know the truth, what's going on? And she told me that yes, he was sick, but he was sick because he was struggling with mental health and depression and suicidal thoughts versus me thinking, you know, he got cancer or something like that. So lost it again. I was like, cause I'm here to do it. Are you kidding me? And it, 
it was even worse at the time, you know, so I'm glad that my mom waited a couple years before she told us the truth because you do almost take on guilt for it. You don't understand. You have so many questions. It's just, it's a lot to take on, especially being so young. So yeah, so she told us that, or she told me at least that that is how he actually died. He committed suicide. Um, I did not go to his funeral at the time. She also thought I was too young for that. And now that I'm older, I am really upset that I didn't get to go to his funeral, but I also think that she made the right decision for me at the age that I was because I don't know that I would have been able to handle it. However, one of my aunts who is one of the, it's a long complicated story, but we call her my aunt. Um, she is a songwriter and she wrote Daniel this beautiful song that was played at his funeral and we have the CD of it. And um, at his funeral, my mom was saying that like everybody in the county came, like there were so many people who showed up to his funeral and nobody could understand why he killed himself because he was just like I mentioned in the beginning, a ray of sunshine. Everybody loved him. Everybody just thought he was so fun and so funny and so happy and nobody understood why he killed himself. And we're gonna get into that in a little bit because you guys know I can't do a video without talking about some tips and advice because that's just what I do here. Um, but to kind of wrap up my story with my uncle. So my uncle was 22 when he committed suicide and he left the earth. Um, he was an amazing human being. He would have been an amazing dad. He would have continued to be an amazing uncle and an amazing friend. And it is something that, like I mentioned, has been very hard for me to even say his name. I didn't even want to talk to anybody named Daniel. I was like, get the hell away from me. You know, it was, it was very hard. Um, but now that I can talk about it, I just want to share him in the light that he was amazing. He was a great human being and losing anybody is never easy um, at all, but especially losing somebody like that in your life when you're super close to them and they're just such a good person is extremely hard. So if you have lost somebody due to suicide, I just want to say that I'm genuinely so sorry from the bottom of my heart. I know it's not easy and I know you hear this all the time, but I promise you it's going to get easier to be able to talk about them. It's not going to be easier to not have them here. Like I think about all the time, you know, I outgrew him. Like I'm turning 25 this year and he committed suicide when he was 22. He didn't even get to live to this point of where I'm at in life. And I think about sometimes randomly driving down the road. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have a daughter now and he's never going to get to meet my daughter. And he's never going to see my younger brother. He's now in the army and all the amazing things my other siblings are doing. And he's just not going to get to experience this. And I believe in heaven and I know he's up there watching us. And I know that he's probably one of my guardian angels watching me do crazy crap. But, you know, physically on earth side, he's not here now. Obviously, you know, you feel the same way. And I just want to say, I'm so sorry that you're dealing with that because it's not easy as the person who is losing or has lost somebody to suicide. And if you are struggling with suicidal thoughts, please know that you are so worthy of being here and being on the earth because we need you here and you are so loved regardless of what your mind is telling you. And again, like I said, my uncle struggled so much with mental health and what his mind was telling him. And he struggled so much with external things that happened to the point where he physically took his life. And I know he regrets it. And I always joke saying that when he comes down and gets me from heaven, I'm kicking him up. I'm kicking him the whole way up because, you know, how rude of him, you know, like he left us. And um, so I want to kind of get into that now and just talk about things that you, if you're struggling with suicidal thoughts, need to be mindful of and need to do. And then also I want to talk about what you can do as somebody who may be dealing with somebody anywhere around you struggling with suicidal thoughts. And before we get into that, I just want to kind of talk about what I did to be able to get past this because that's also a part of this that it's, it's major and not easy. So let's start there by just letting you know it's not easy, okay? And like I said, I was eight and I'm now 25, turning 25. And it's still a little hard, you know? I still choke up when I talk about it. I still have a hard time understanding why and, um, you know, selfish things. And we'll, we'll get into that. However, so one of the things that has been really helpful for me, let's, if you've already lost somebody to suicide, okay? Not somebody's talking about it or dealing with it right now, but you've currently already have somebody around you who has taken their life. One of the things that has happened for me and that has helped for me, obviously you guys know, is having strong support systems, having people around you who also love and value this person or these people just as much as you do. Because when you do with anything alone, you start to just take it on way more than you need to because you're not venting about it, you're not talking about it, and you just take on so much anger and hatred and misunderstanding and I think a lot of more pain than you would if you had a support system 
of mutual people who are also going through the same thing. So that's my first thing is just make sure that you have those people around. So obviously I had my family, my mom, my siblings, but I also had, you know, like my aunt, the one who he was dating before he left for the military. Um, I have other people, other extended family who also are around that we can talk about him. I mean, my aunt, the one who I call my aunt, who was his girlfriend at the time, she used to babysit us with him. And, uh, you know, she used to come over whenever he would come home from the army. So we grew up with her. And to this day, her and I still communicate. We still talk. She's remarried now, thankfully, with an amazing husband. And she's got, you know, she's got kids and she's thriving in her life. But she still thinks about him all the time. And so her and I have a really amazing, you know, kind of relationship where if I find a nice picture or a funny video or something, I send it to her. And we still have that bond where he was our mutual thing and we can talk about it. So having that support system is major. The second biggest thing that you can do is to try to be understanding that it has to do with them and not you. And you guys have probably heard me say this on other videos, especially like my bullying video and things like that, because it is so true that anytime anybody's dealing with anything with their mental health, it's not about you, no matter how much you try to make it about yourself. So like I just joked about, oh my God, he left me. You know, you do think that and you're questioning yourself, like what did I do wrong and what could I have done and could I have chased him or could I have made him love me more? Could I have been a better niece or a better sister or a better whatever? And you think all these things and you question yourself so much and you put yourself in like, you put yourself in these almost suicidal, like crazy thoughts because you think that you did something wrong, but it has nothing to do with you. Um, now there's a difference again, like I said, with my bullying video where people are tormenting you and things like that, that's one thing. However, somebody struggling with mental health and genuinely struggling with feeling like they've got no worth, they don't belong here, or they, they just wanna like shut the noise out, that's not something that you can help. That is something clinically incorrect in their brain. And that is something that is genuinely a them problem. And I'm not saying that and I'm like, okay, it's your problem, deal with it. But I'm saying that because if they've already taken their life, then you have to realize that it's not about you. It wasn't about you. It was a selfish decision that they made because they should have, you know? I'm not, I don't think that anybody who has suicidal thoughts should try to fix themselves or heal necessarily for other people because I think when you do things for other people it's not necessarily permanent it's like a temporary okay I don't want to disappoint people or I don't want to let people down or I don't want to harm my family whatever the case is so I'm gonna heal for them but they don't actually heal for themselves so in the moment you know they're doing these things and they're thinking about themselves because that's all they have they they're not thinking about you Unfortunately, they're not thinking about how it's going to affect other people because all they can think about is shutting the noise off, stopping and being done because that's what they want and that's what they feel like they need. So you have to understand that if it's already happened, it's not something that you could have done or didn't do or anything like that. For most people who commit suicide, this is something that they've been trying to do or at least thinking about doing for years, maybe even before you were around, maybe before you were born, maybe before you were in that relationship with them, whatever the case may be. So it's not about you. And I think that I had to really take that on because, you know, I, I played the whole, my gosh, I, I wish I could have stopped him. And I was so young. I couldn't chase after him. I didn't understand what he was doing. And I should have been a better niece. And I know my mom struggled with that. My siblings struggled with that. Like, we all struggle with that. And that's something that you just naturally do because it's like, if I could have loved them more, if I could have done more, then they would be here. And again, not in all cases. Maybe somebody is really genuinely reaching and begging for help. And that just comes to recognizing the signs, which we'll talk about in a minute. But in most cases, if it's already happened, please, please, please do not blame yourself. You cannot put the blame on you. It had everything to do with their own mental being and not, not you. Okay, and the third biggest thing that I will say when it comes to you've already lost somebody to suicide, so how do we move forward, is just give it time, like I mentioned years years okay guys before i could even say his name and i genuinely mean that like it was ridiculous i could not speak about him without tearing up i didn't want people to even talk about it because i just kind of compressed it in the back of my mind and i didn't want to think about it and so it took years and it will take years i mean you just lost a chunk of your life a huge part of your life and it wasn't like you know on it wasn't like a sickness or like a car accident or something like that i think it's even harder to deal with when it's somebody who chose to do this they chose to take themselves out of this world and that goes back to the whole 
blaming yourself and, and, you know, taking on that blame, but giving it time to understand and to really dive into it and healing yourself because you now have to heal from what happened. So know that you're going to have to give it time. And then one more thing, and we'll go into the next part. I would just say the other big thing is talk the good things. Speak about the good things about this person because it's so easy to get wrapped up and they killed themselves. They took themselves away from this earth. They left me. They, you know, they're, they're not here anymore. And unfortunately, the fact is, it's true. They're gone. And I know that sounds really harsh, but what you have to do now is talk about them in a good light. Share their story. You know, share their story for the sake of helping others, but also share their story because their name and their memory deserves to live on in an amazing and good and happy light versus only thinking about the bad and the negative things that unfortunately happen. So for me now, I share my story about him and I post about him a lot. And it's so funny, like I mentioned, every time I post about him, some random person, no idea who they are, finds me, messages me, tells me some other crazy story about him, the funny things he used to do and who he was and all this stuff. So keeping his memory alive has been super helpful to me. You guys know I'm a positive person, but I wasn't for the longest time when it came to this aspect of my life. And now I can look at it more in a positive light where yes, he's not here. Yes, I miss him every single day, but I can now share his story about who he was and hopes to again, help other people and to help myself and my family and everybody else who's dealing with his loss heal because we're keeping his memory alive in greatness and not just in sadness. Okay, so for this next part, we're just going to go over the tips and tricks. I'm gonna be really quick here, but I did write them down. So if I'm looking down, that's why, because again, I like to make sure I get everything that I wanna talk about. So this is for people who are dealing with suicidal thoughts. And I wanna to talk to you first because you need the help right now. In this moment, if you're struggling, you really, really need this. So I wanna to talk to you. First of all, like I mentioned, you are worthy of being here. You are so loved and you matter so deeply. My little outro I say at the end of my videos is not just for a cute catchphrase. I mean that and I really need you to understand that you are loved and you matter so deeply. So please, if you're struggling, follow these tips so we can get you some help. So number one, know that you are not alone, even if it feels like you are. So I know when you're struggling with depression and mental health issues and anything along those lines, it feels like the rest of the world is out to get you or you have nobody. And you may physically be in a situation where you have bad parents, bad friends, and you can't get out of it. So you may feel like you're alone and I completely get that, but you're not alone. There is always help. There's always somebody you can talk to. That leads me to the second one, which is just to seek professional help. And I don't mean to be mean, but people who are not your family or friends or people who are biased to your situation or the people who made you the way that you are and who made you hate your life and they're trying to go to them to seek help and you know permission to change, it's not gonna work. So seek professional help, counseling, a mentor, a coach, somebody who can help you through this. And if you feel like you genuinely don't have anybody else, you have no other options, please reach out to me. I'm here a million percent of the time to talk to anybody who's struggling in any way, shape or form. And especially when it comes to suicidal thoughts. So know that you are not alone in this. You're not alone in your struggle. You know, it also helps to find people who are dealing with this the same way that people who are overcoming drug and alcoholism have AA groups and they have things like that, or people who are dealing with codependency, there's codependency classes and groups. There are people who struggle with suicidal thoughts and mental health and who are there to support each other. So look up Facebook groups, look up in Craigslist and look up different ads of groups. And sometimes it is easier to be around like-minded people. And a lot of the time you guys can tend to help each other get out of this state of mind. So if it's not a counselor or anything like that, then you feel more comfortable with peers who are also struggling and you feel like that may help you, then find that. You're just, you're not alone, okay? There's so many options. On top of seeking professional help, just be open and honest about what you're feeling. So you have to be willing to tell people that you're struggling. If you feel like you're struggling and you're starting to have these suicidal thoughts, you're starting to have these triggers and things that are really harmful for your being, be open to talking about it. Now, in this case, you can tell family if you feel safe with family, if you feel safe with friends, then tell people that you're struggling, that you need help so we or they can take the right steps to get you where you need to go if you can't do it for yourself yet. You have to be open to talking, open to telling people how you feel. And then once you're in counseling and once you're with a mentor or a coach or whoever it may be, again, being open and honest, because if you're not open and honest and you're just like surface level doing it because somebody told you to, again, that goes back to ha you have to do it for yourself versus your mom or your sister or whoever shoving you in counseling, you're not going to heal or fix that situation. So you have to be open and honest with yourself and be open and honest with your counselor or the person who you're talking 
talking to. That way you guys can really dissect why you feel the way that you feel and get prepared for it to get ugly before it gets beautiful because you really, really do need to dig into these things, get to the root of it and figure it out so you can heal and move forward and try to eliminate these thoughts. Number three is don't be too proud. And I mean that in the sense of if you go to a counselor and they say, hey, let's dive into this. Let's do some hypnosis or let's do some you know, images or whatever the case is, don't be too proud to to not do that, okay? If they say that maybe you need a mood stabilizer pill and that would help, you know, there's different people who disagree with that and whatever you feel is best for you, but don't be too proud to take the help that somebody's trying to give you. And I think a lot of the time when you're struggling with anything, you just struggle so hard. Generally, people struggle with taking help. They struggle with that because it's pride. So you have to be, again, when you're willing to be open and honest, you have to be willing to take that help and accept whatever somebody tells you you need to do and go into it full force. And the last one, again, I'm just going to reiterate here is know that you are so worthy. I mean, you're worthy of healing and feeling like you belong on this earth. You are so loved and unique and special and matter so deeply that you're worthy of fixing this and you're worthy of moving forward for the sake of your own being. And then that trickle effects into everybody else in your life. So I hope that those were helpful. And again, there's so many other things I can do to break this video out a lot more. But now I want to jump into people who may be around people who are struggling with suicidal thoughts. And I'm going to give you guys a quick little tip rundown as well. So how can you help? So one, check on your happy friends. And I know we see memes like this, but as I mentioned with my uncle, he was the happy friend. Nobody knew. Nobody saw it coming. Nobody understood. So check on those people who are always checking on other people, okay? Like we struggle, okay? I'm not, I don't struggle with suicidal thoughts. Thankfully, I'm very blessed for that. But I struggle, you know, I have hard days. I have days where I'm just not in a good mood. I have days where it's just annoying. And there are other people who are much happier than me or happier and they're just good people and nobody would see it coming who are struggling with suicidal thoughts. So please check in on those people. Don't just assume everything's always peaches and cream, you know, just make sure that you're checking in on everybody. But especially those people who you wouldn't necessarily think it's coming because you just don't know who and what they're struggling with. Okay, another huge one is just know the signs of suicide. And I feel like we've learned this in elementary school. There's millions and millions and millions of signs and that could be a whole other video in itself. But a couple of them are just, if somebody's talking about being a burden, they're talking about they don't have a purpose here. They're talking about they don't fit in anywhere. They don't understand why they're here. All these things, that is a major sign of suicidal thoughts. If you see a crazy increase in drug and alcohol use, that could be another last minute thing that they're trying to use as a coping mechanism versus committing suicide. Same thing with cutting themselves. Be mindful. Watch out for things like that because these are all signs that they are trying to use this as another coping mechanism so they do not commit suicide. But if those don't work and they won't because they're not healing, then suicide may be the next step for them. Acting reckless, um, withdrawing, pulling away from family or friends, pulling away from people that they love, acting crazy, just doing things that are totally outside of their character, not caring what the consequences of their actions are, those are also signs. And extreme mood swings, if you see anything like crazy, like zero to 100 all the time, every day, that's also a major sign. Again, like I mentioned, there are so many different websites you can look up different suicidal signs that you should be mindful for. I can't go through all of them, but just recognizing the signs, getting comfortable and knowing them yourself. That way you can recognize them if somebody else is struggling or you may notice that those are not recognizable. And then again, the last one that I want to talk about for you guys is just know that it's not about you. So a lot of the time we see somebody struggling and we're like, well, why? Like you have a good life and I love you and I care about you and all these things. But it's again, not about you. It's about them and their struggle and what they're internalizing and dealing with. So know that you need to be patient and you need to be kind, which is why I always say choose kindness and say great things to yourself and to everybody else around you because you just don't know how much your words are affecting people. Um, be mindful with that person and ask them things like, hey, where do you see yourself in a week from now? Where do you see yourself in five years from now? engage and actually care about their being especially if you recognize those signs i mean you should be doing that generally but especially if you recognize any of those signs or they say anything that makes you think that they're going towards that direction be there for them but do it selflessly where you understand you know it's not about you be patient with them because if you're like okay i'm gonna go really hard and send encouraging messages for two weeks but you're annoying because you're not fixing yourself that's not fair and that's just going to trigger them even more be patient 
and understanding that it is about them and it is for them. The healing is for them and not for you. So I hope that this video helped. It was kind of long winded. I did not go too much into detail about Daniel because as I mentioned, it's really not entirely everybody's business, certain parts of, you know, him and what happened. Um, but if you have questions about it, I will definitely share that story offline. I really just wanted to share this story, his story, as well as some tips and things to be mindful of, because unfortunately, this is something that is rising time after time after time, and it is just becoming a bigger reality. And I think especially with COVID right now, there's a lot of depression, a lot of crazy suicidal thoughts and just really hard times that people are dealing with, with being isolated and being away from people and it can be really bad. So I wanted to do this as a reminder again, to check in on people, make sure that you're being kind and know that if you're struggling, you're worthy of it and call somebody, do something today to help you guys, all of you get on the right track towards avoiding committing suicide. Thanks for watching. And more than anything, guys, remember you are so loved. You are so valued. You matter so deeply to this world, to God, to others. I hear you. I see you. I appreciate you guys. I love you. And I will talk to you next time.